Hey guys, so um, last batch filming of the day. Um, you could probably, if you watch them in order, you probably see me waking up. It's early Saturday morning. Um, wanted to get some batch filming done. This is going to be just for this book. I will do, when I read the other three, I will do a Should You Read the Old Man's War universe. Actually, I think there's six. Uh, so in this book, we meet John Perry. He's our main character. It's a first person story. Um, he's 75 years old. Kind of the back of the cover gives you this idea of he did two things on his 75th birthday. He went and signed up for the army and he went to his wife's grave. Um, basically the colonial defense force. We are colonizing the stars and we need soldiers. Um, the United States, the earth, every, everything on earth, all we know is that these people go out into space and they fight. We don't know anything else about it. They are super secretive. Um, they have this amazing new technology, more advanced technology than anyone else on the planet. So we, we see this great space elevator. Um, something happens where they're able to give um, young bodies back to these older people. Um, everybody who fights in the war has to be 75 or I think you have to go on your 75th birthday. If you miss your window, you're done. So it's, it's, it's a really interesting take on the story. I actually got to meet John Scalzi in the thumbnail. You would have seen it, and I'll show you some pictures here. And he signed the book for me. Um, he actually, I asked him, I was like, so where did you get the idea for Old Man's War? All I knew is that older people go and fight. And he was telling me that most of his inspiration came from this book right here. Starship Troopers. He's a big Heinlein fan, Heinlein fan, and um, it is, and most people say it is a continuation of a Heinlein idea. Um, what is war? What is colonization? What is going on um, in the far future? Will we be different than we were back then? Will we make different decisions as we move forward in time? Will we make better decisions as we're better people? I think as we grow and continue to get better, we get we become better people. Um, we get rid of old um, prejudices, pre prejudices and bad habits. And, um, you know, we continue some of the things that are awful. But I think as culture moves forward, we, we drop away some of the things that were heinous and awful. And we, we try to move forward for a better culture. Really, the main character is, is just an all-around everyman. Um, funny guy. He's a writer. Um, he wrote advertising. Um, you know, he was the guy that created your little commercial um, projects. You know, he 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 worked for a tire company, but I imagine he's the guy that came up with the um, Chick Fil A slogans. You know, that kind of guy. Um, just had a good sense of humor. Um, wasn't ashamed of himself and his humor. Um, had a son. His son lived a good life. He says goodbye to his son because once you leave, you can never come back. Um, and his wife had passed away. So he get. I, I don't want to tell you much more about it. I want to do a completely spoiler fill. Wait a minute. Do I want to do... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go into spoilers. How about that? And then later on, I will come back to you with a universe building uh, video. They will have no spoilers whatsoever. So if you want to leave, go ahead and leave. Um, everything non-spoiler has already been said. So from this point on, I will go into some spoilers. All right, so when they get there... I want to read it. I'm leaving. Bye. All right, see ya. Um, so when they get up into space, they get new bodies. They don't get re-young again, which they think is going to happen. He meets a group of people called the Old Farts, and those people become his friend group. A um, couple different people. We've got... Um, I, his his main person is Alan, who's I believe he's a gay Jewish man, if I, if I remember correctly. But it's not a huge part of the story. It's just one of the things about his life. Um, but they, the, when the group f separates and they go out and they're deployed, um, Alan and John stay together through the whole story. Um, and so Alan and John are really the nucleus of what the old farts club is it actually kind of confused me at one point because we learn about one of the old farts dying um and i was like what in the world this is kind of seems out of nowhere but it what it was is it was as the you know they they wanted to learn about one another and how um the the old farts you know the team when when the team started dying um what was going on so um if you get a little confused about sudden change that is because your first person's perspective the whole time and all of a sudden it's like this person died 
or this is how this person died. I was like, what in the world? What, what's going on here? And so it was a little confusing. But, all right, so back into um, what we're doing. All right, so they get new bodies. These bodies are green and super, super attractive. Like 20-year-old, as hot as hot can get. Um, and so they have this orgy. That's what it was. Um, it's not deeply described, but it's described enough where you go, okay, uh, can this end? Um, I was here for a sci-fi military story, not a, not an orgy. Um, but, uh, it's, it's because they wanted them to get to know their bodies, I guess. And they wanted to get comfortable in their bodies, kind of enjoy being young again for a minute before they go into the harshness of war. Um, and then they go to basic training and they, but they go to basic training, not having to physically be trained. They have to unlearn things that they needed, um, to unlearn. Um, and, and that is generally the hardest part. Um, John Perry makes the connection with the, um, drill sergeant because Willie, his advertising, um, is a tattoo on the guy's shoulder. He was going to commit suicide. Um, and he got that tattoo on his shoulder. And, um, so he's like, I like you. I'll make you the unit captain. And he becomes a unit captain. And him and I, he makes Alan his second command. Um, and, and they go through basic training and they do well. Um, I, John Perry doesn't do anything badly. Uh, he's, he's your hero. Um, which is fine. I, I enjoy a story where you're just, you're rooting for the good guy and you're hoping the good guy does well and you're hoping everything works out for the good guy. Um, I don't need a story where everything goes badly, um, where everything is turned on its head and everybody's unhappy. I, I like people being happy. I enjoy people being happy. Um, and this story made me happy. I mean, I, I'd sit down and I'd read 50 pages at a time. I d destroyed it. It, it. it was so easy to read. Um, and then we, we end up, you know, he, he does really good, um, starts moving up through the ranks. Um, he kind of learns about the Kansu and the Kansu and their religious, their religion. And so because he learned about the Kansu and their religion, he's able to um, kind of negotiate with them later on in the book. And when he does negotiate with them later on in the book and they need their help, his ability to negotiate with them is a huge part of what's going on. And then later, we early on in the book, hear about the Ghost Brigades, and then we learn about what the Ghost, ghost Brigades are, um, which are the people that died before they were able to inhabit their new bodies. And that's really interesting and cool because, you know, they, they weren't going to waste that technology. But, but these new soldiers are babies, you know, to, to think, you know, you know, Jane, his wife, is, or in his wife's body, she's a new personality in his wife's body um, who's six years old. You know, to think about that, you know, when she died, her body was put into service and a consciousness was created for her. Um, and how does that consciousness um, do things? We see her um, at one point kind of speak with her consciousness of her body, because um, I think the idea is DNA is tied to or consciousness is tied to your DNA. That's the way that they're able to transfer our bodies. Um, so some of her consciousness was transferred when they took her DNA and created her new body. So I'm, I'm excited for this book. I'm excited for what's going to happen next. Um, I've heard we don't always follow John Perry, which I love John Perry. I thought he was great. Um, he, he was definitely the, the, the guy I was, I was rooting for. Um, so hopefully he doesn't go away, but I wouldn't mind seeing other people in this universe, seeing what's going on. It was my first John Scalzi book. So when I met him, um, I kind of prefaced it that way. I said, Hey, I've never met you before, or I've never read any of your books before, but I've heard you're funny and you're good and you write great science fiction. So, um, you know, give me your, your elevator pitch on your book. Was that selfish? Was that might've been a little awful. I shouldn't have done that, but, um, he was very kind and I enjoyed meeting him. So. I will, um, I'll sign off here and go ahead and edit some of these videos and, um, we'll talk to you guys next time. See ya. Bye.